Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you. What a beautiful time it is to be alive, right? And I'm not saying this is a great day to be at the Oscars. <laughs> so, how are you doing? Today's um, session, today's episode is going to be about how we manage our emotions and how we respond to certain things and how we can overcome certain actions without apologizing. So in a way, we all feel stress. We have all felt anger and how we respond to it. Today, we're going to be talking about that. So my name is Lisa, your expert hypnotherapist, and uh, you are on Heal Talk Tuesdays. Today, let's talk about what has been happening in your life, what is going on, and thank you for being present at this moment. Everybody in the world is talking about what happened at the Oscars. Actually, you know, I was away for the entire week. I was at two different events. I was at Secret Knock, which was absolutely wonderful. And then I was at a training seminar for three intensive days, which was amazing. And thank you for the to the power team and Bill Walsh. Uh, I learned a lot. You know, just when we think we don't know much, we learn more. So the reason I'm mentioning all that is because I was in San Diego and then came home and then I went to Dallas, got home at 8.30 and missed the Oscars, not knowing what's going on. By the time I got home, it was already 9.30. And when I was in Dallas flying over, one of the attendants who was helping me, I just said, ah, it's so quiet in here. And yet the plane was full. And I said, oh, I'm surprised there is not less people because of the Oscars. And that lady turned around and said, Oscars, is it today? Well, that makes me realize not everybody is consumed with what's happening in Hollywood. Not everyone is consumed with what's happening at the Oscars. And most men don't care. And women look for who's wearing what. And yes, the winners at the end. Hi, Sid Ajahn. How are you? So, if I can say most people were not caring, now everyone is talking. Not everyone. There is a whole boom over millions of people talking about what happened at the Oscars. Yes, we're talking about that one little incident that it was even said, and if you pay attention, it's like moment in history in Oscars, right? So, how do we manage what, we ha what happens, real or staged? If it happened, it didn't happen. If it was a joke, if it was not a joke. I don't think anything to do with making a mockery of someone's health and wellness and disability is kosher. It's not just, it's not acceptable, right? And yet, no matter where we are in life, you have to realize as my grandmother used to say, the tongue has no bone. So it moves, it's not solid. It moves, it rotates, it goes up and down. So it moves like this. And what she meant was, there will always be people who will speak. There will always be people who will say things. But what we take Words do matter, words do hurt, but words in certain circumstances, even the word F-U-C-K, that so many people use it, they use it for good things, bad things. If it's something is ugly, they say it's ugly, F-word. 
when something is beautiful or happy, they say, I am effing happy, or this is effing beautiful. So it, everything is in context. When it comes out of context, that's when it becomes out of the box or not acceptable. Not acceptable at all. Yes, a lot of people, thank you, Adrian, are now more understanding of what alopecia is, which is the loss of hair. And if we want to take this further, um, realizing that uh, she, Will Smith's wife, Jenna, has been coming in public. She has been bald. She's been doing her red table uh, sessions and shows and everything uh, very much in the last three years, almost three years, as a bald person. So it's not that it was her first time to be out there. So it was a great message. It was a great message to become more sensitive about people with medical issues, be more sensitive before you speak, be more sensitive about other people's feelings. Now, there's all views of this was staging and it was not right for he was laughing first and then looked at Jenna and then went and did the actions. And while he went, he was smiling. Chris Rock was smiling. And so this entire thing, what I want to concentrate more on is not necessarily of what happened because we can sensationalize this and one day, just like years ago when the actor who won and he was so happy, he was running up and down the aisles, getting on the piano, having a great time. That made sensational uh, story and uh, it, it was like days and days they were playing that out. This too will be played out. One is positive, one is negative, and yet realizing how we cope with stressors. That's what we want to talk about. Because someone's medical issue become, everyone becomes very much self-conscious of what they feel and what they are going through. Other people may not feel the same about it, especially now taking it into a context and I, let's talk about this let's share if you agree or not if you walk into a comedy club if you go to a comedy store and the, and you're sitting in front and the comedian we've seen this over and over picks on you which they usually pick on the first and second row and they make jokes like howard stern used to make jokes and many many big comedians we're not going to name because there's been many, many comedians that you go and they literally make jokes to a point that people look at it as like, how dare you? That's an insult. But it, the delivery, you, no matter if it's an insult or not, actually comedians make joke and mockery of their life all the time. And so when we're in the front row, we might be picked at. So if I am sensitive, I would not be sitting in the front row. That's a fact. Number two, we are more conscious and self-conscious about what is happening within our own disability than someone may see of us as a disability. Now, dyslexia can be a disability and stuttering, uh, looks, uh, anything either people see or hear, and they will point it out. I myself have been pointed out so many times, especially with my accent. Who are you? Actually, not who are you, where are you from? And in the beginning, I used to take very much offense. What do you mean, where am I from? 
I'm from Los Angeles. No, really, where are you from? And the way they would ask, I would say, why are you asking? Well, you've got an accent. Well, doesn't everybody have an accent? So I used to be so guarded on this one little thing. And it's not because, because they wanted to put me down. They just wanted to put me in a box as a comparison to understand maybe my culture, maybe my accent, maybe, it doesn't matter. It's just categorizing. So when we do this, it's not so much for them, it's for us. So how we respond to certain things is where it comes to. So it would be so great before reacting, before being responsive, to take a moment. And I know Will Smith took a moment. His moment was to laugh. And then he looked. And then it was like, wow, that was uncalled for. And then it was like, okay, now I'm going to do a an action because it was not a reaction, it was an action. It took a moment to think it, to get up, to act upon. So wouldn't it be great if it was not staged, that it would be more thought of what I'm doing and sometimes knowing that everything has consequences. And I bet anything that the consequences were thought of. And if it was a reaction and it was all oh, the whole thing was a reactive mode and he went into defense mode of his wife, which is very much honorable. And hopefully most people will do that. And it was like, that's uncalled for and I'm going to go into defense. That they find a better way to defend versus an action that it's more violent. It was not called for. It could have been verbal and it could have been dealt with later. So this entire thing, no matter what it was, I'm talking about us in daily life. As a domestic abuse consultant, the message that was sent is also bigger than what it is. So here we dealt with anger. Here we dealt with reaction. Here we dealt with action after a pause of laughter and what am I supposed to do next? And then we also had the message for children that literally look up to Will Smith of what kind of an action it took. So if I know as a joke, but most people, we all say, um, this put Oscars back on mainstream to talk about if people forgot all about what Oscars was about. It, it, well, millions of millions of millions clicked on that or are talking about this as I am now. But when someone were talking about it is the message we are sending. Is this how we defend our partner's honor? Is this how we defend my loved one? Is this how I react and I go slapping you, kicking you, hurting you because of what you said? I don't believe so. Because I hope that most of us, um, that most of us have come to a place in time that we think twice before we speak. Um, and when we become calmer, here is point number two, become calm, calm yourself, gather yourself before you react. Another thing that we can do is 
literally in real life, take a walk before you say something that what you say is going to hurt someone far greater than the original talk. Another thing you can do is have time out, literally. Um, have a me time. If you are part of our group, which is my daily gratitude, if you're not, please join our private group on Facebook, which is daily gratitude. And every single day I post something in there about our mind, about our body, about ourselves, about how to have a, a, a new momentum, how to be in gratefulness or make a change in how we set things in motion how we take ownership of certain things or just sometimes simply Saturdays is simply just be present or do something for yourself um, another one is identify with possible solutions what could be a better solution and the ramifications now every because of what happened the person who Chris Rock the person in charge is gonna get slack the person who slapped is gonna get slack the, everyone is gonna get something and it's not going to be positive and the only thing positive is be more sensitive be more sensitive of what you say be more sensitive about other people's feelings and it goes both ways the person who delivered it and the person who react to it but in life how do we cope with this kind of a stress and anxiety and I love what you say said you say when someone asks me how, about my accents I respond I speak four languages and how many languages do you speak is it only one well that's like is it only one is like I am far higher greater than you my response is usually I was not born here and I do speak multiple languages and sometimes my accent comes through and then I say but I've been here for 40 years and I am proud of who I am so it's not that I am downplaying you I am not making a mockery of another person if they have few languages or they don't because it's not their fault either and we have opportunities I come from a place that I had the opportunity to be in a school that forced us in a way and we had no choice to other than learning three languages there were schools that only taught one language so I think in life everything is how we put it what we look what we focus on and what we let go as always it's not the reaction it's not the action but it is the emotion placed with an action that creates this emotional reaction the experience for some positive for others negative no matter what this was a grand and I'm saying grand lesson and it came and I'm saying it again if the person was anyone different it may have not been the same response and it doesn't matter what we think it's already done the could have should have would have doesn't matter if it was staged doesn't matter millions and millions 
It's showtime. It's show business. Because it's made everyone talk about it. And we talk about it by bringing how we act upon what we say how we are supposed to react under certain circumstances and is our anger and our response in defending someone we love justified by hurting someone else physically is it justified to be so reactive unless we are defending their life right and if it was if I am walking and I see danger coming towards me, I will defend and maybe kick and hurt someone faster than anyone else. But with words, we respond with words. So, the beauty of that is that every one of us is to sit and reflect within ourselves and talk about it with our loved ones if in a family there is arguments there is reactions there is hurting one another either in words if it is just or not if it is raising a hand is it just or not is a discipline or is it in reactive mode or I'm going to show you what are we teaching what are we talking about and what is our if we don't know how to manage it you know this is the work that i do as a stress and anxiety expert teaching and guiding my clients learn how to manage their stress manage their anger manage their anxiety is exactly what we do it is something that if it is you go into fight and flight all the time, you can't speak and you can't stand up for yourself, then find the means of learning where it stems from and I want to empower myself so that I can have a voice, that I can speak and express freely without being afraid. And if there is a fear factor, I can't speak up for myself because I was taught you are only to be seen, not to be heard. Let's find the means of what it was, find the cause so that you can empower yourself. And if the pendulum is the other way that you, if you or someone you know, I mean, you just stay fly off the handle, they get angry all the time, that they raise hands more than necessary or unjust, then there is, there is ways to find how to manage anger, manage your reactions, and find a better way, a better solution to resolve things. That's the work I do as a clinical hypnotherapist and stress management consultant where I used to work with companies and organizations in how to manage stress and the same with my clients. Today I had a client who said, do you think this can be resolved? I believe if you are here, you want to resolve it and I will guide you, help you and find the solutions to help you resolve it. Why? Because we truly evoke what was. We delve deeper into the subconscious or whatever it is happening in your life in order for you to recognize it, acknowledge it, understand the cause of it, of your reactions, your anger, your outbursts right or being so sensitive and where it comes from and for you to be more grounded with yourself and be very gently expressing and 
sharing with others that this is not proper and this is right. And then we come to embrace the reality. This is where I am. This is what I feel and what I can do to be much safer with myself, with my thoughts, with my being, and that I can shift the emotions connected to my actions, my reactions, to handle it better. What about the message of building or making fun of anyone's disability? Well, I don't think that's just at any time in life. And yet, when we go into comedy clubs and everything, again, I'm saying it, Adrian says, depends on, on the comedy. I'm not going to see someone I already feel is offensive. You know what? Exactly. We have choices. People who literally watched Howard Stern or they go and listen to his shows or they used to watch him and uh, tune into his shows and listen to him day in, day out. He was the most number one sought after derogatory comedian. And there have been so many others that by making a mockery of people, they became famous. But that was dark comedy. It's putting people down. That's not what we're talking. And yet there's thousands of people. That's what they get their kicks from. Are they right? Are they long? Wrong? Howard Stern became Howard Stern. We're talking about him. It's because he took something that people thought and made it into reality. Gross grotesque yes but so are so many of and this is the reality of the things people watch on this beautiful screen or this screen the games that kids are playing murder mayhem destruction porn all the things that people watch when it becomes it's like it's so sick it's so grotesque it's so berserkly negative that they are so shocked and engrossed in it and they click on it over and over and still watch it so in a way showtime and everything that it's media that works with the psyche the emotion the mo emotion that they trigger they want to trigger something and it doesn't matter if it is good or bad it's still triggering an emotion the same way as there's things that are stressors we know being in traffic in los angeles is stressor but how we deal with the stress is what matters knowing that you're going to be in a gridlock if you are driving in Los Angeles and if you are driving and going somewhere from point A to B on the freeway, there might be accidents, there might be traffic jams, and yes, people who drive a long distance, they are prepared to be on, in traffic for minimum of extra 15, 20 minutes, and they give themselves that leeway because they know they're going to be in there. Now, when you realize it's a given and you get there faster, you go, wow, today was a light traffic. How wonderful was this? And I'm not stressed. But if you put yourself under the gun every day, you walk out right at the point and you get to work every single day later and later and you're tardy and you're late and people make, they mention it it's like you're late again traffic well do something about it that you're not stressed and you're not being talked about or punished or it's not being pointed out we can't always blame something we already know and that is the reality if you are going to be in traffic other than there is an extra traffic jam an accident that it's unexpected unexpected 
And if you've given yourself extra time, knowing that this time, it takes half an hour to get there, I'll give myself extra 10 minutes. Then you are preparing yourself. And when you are prepared, your reaction is not as bad. It's not as drastic. So how we cope, a solution is prepare yourself, expect it, have the intention of preparing and calming yourself down instead of the fight find ways to calm yourself maybe with a chant with a mantra get on the phone talk to someone if you need to walk it off walk off bring the windows down put a music that calms you or you can sing and have a good time or realize if something is triggering you more than what it needs to, it needs attention for you to tend to it. For everyday occurrence, we learn to manage our stressors. And when it builds up, builds up, builds up. And we have not found the way to express we learn to do a checkup from the inside and say what is this thing that triggers me still that i have not dealt with and that is something i need to do something about because this is not good for my body it's not good for my psyche it's not good for the people around me when something is no longer benefiting you and it's not enhancing you think about making a change and change does not mean to the negative change is something we all go through because stress is something normal and we are in and out of that some people stress about the weather or I get stressed when my computer doesn't function well. But you know what? Realizing at that very moment, we say it, we get upset. Okay, what do I do about it? What can I do today or this very instant to calm myself? in order for me to find a solution. And if I can't find a solution, what can I do? Because throwing the computer out the door is not the solution. But talking to my computer, work with me, work with me, work with me, come on, yes, and it worked. Realizing at that very moment, I just expressed it. And I didn't harm the computer. Releasing certain emotions instead of bundling it and making it so tight and suppressing, 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 it's going to come to a boil somewhere. So what if just for today, and I'm saying it, just for today, you say, I will take a nice deep breath, swallow my saliva, and realize what I say matters and you too matter. What I say matters as much as you do. You too matter. What you feel matters. You do matter. So with the great words and the philosophy or the computer goes out to Wilshire Boulevard, right? Oh, I love it. Adrian, I love it when you say that. 
sometimes we just have to realize when we talk to the computer, even the computer gets afraid not to be thrown away and it starts working. You know, sometimes we just need to put some humor and if we can't put humor to be more mindful and respect others and honor ourselves because we never know who's listening and who's watching. And for that, I am grateful for you and for sharing and for being present. I don't know. Hopefully this message was, uh, would resonate with you because we all have flaws and none of us are perfect. None of us are perfect. And that's a good thing to know. I'm not better than you. No matter who I am, where I go, what pictures I post, who I was with, reality is I'm human. I make mistakes and yet I am ready to learn and accept and appreciate every essence of not only who I am, but other human beings. So, does this make sense? Does this resonate with you? Just say yes if it does. And, or you can just say hashtag yes, it resonates. And, uh, Knowing anyone here, <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to myself. Adrian, Claudia, Sadajan, thank you for being here. I hope today's message was beneficial and realizing that we even being here on this message right here on Heal Talk Tuesday, every Tuesday that I come, it's my words or only my words. And I truly appreciate when my clients message me and they text me. As a matter of fact, one of the texts that I received last week um, for interviewing Linda, uh, Linda Fisk from, uh, from San Diego, it was, so thank you for be coming uh, and interviewing Linda because she was wonderful. It was all about empowering women and everything. You know, almost five years I've been coming live on Facebook. Sometimes I come with an agenda of what exactly I'm going to be talking about. Other times we come with the things that are happening, are current, what's happening. There's been times that I read uh, and text and we talk about that and message an email a flower or my clients issues because no matter what happens we all learn from one another I'm not an expert in everything only the work that I do and if I can make a difference in one people one person's life then I've done my job yes yes enjoying your talk thank you and I am grateful for you, Seta, and every one of you that show up every week or, or even once a month and once in a while and say thank you for the message. And for that, realizing that being on Mother Earth we are not immune to love, nor to words that are going to hurt us. What we do with that and how we react to it, it's up to us. It's up to you. And with that, thank you and goodbye until next week. And until then, God bless you and may the universal light surround you. Be safe, be loved, you too matter. You're welcome, Claudia. Bye-bye.
Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.